right, we're live now, so be careful what you say. Right. <laughs> Harvey, what day is it? March 28th, 2022, corresponding to the 26th day of Adrian Shaney, 5782. Okay. So tonight we have a very interesting shear. Last week, we started to discuss the topic. I told you that somebody in Israel told me that in his neighborhood, they don't need OU products because they heard that the OU relies on Bittel. And even though halakhically Bittel, uh, when you have the pr proper ratio, the food is kosher, but it, he said it's still the, the, the non-kosher ingredients of Tamtim is alive. So uh, that's what I wanted to discuss. I started to discuss that last week is that Tamtim alive if something is, is bottle. Now, last week we saw the Gemara says, if you look on the front first page, the Gemara says, 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 on the top of the page, O Temis, O Semis, it seals your heart from wisdom. So, um, so then we saw that there's a machlokas, is a, is a person allowed to be machmir? Oh, so first time we talked about, last time you talked about, is the Timtam Alev because of the Avera, or is the Timtam Alev because of the Metzias of, of Isser? That it gets into your cells and it, and it uh, corrupts the individual. So the, the, it's contradictory sources because the Shulchan Aruch says that if, even, even in the case of Pihuach Nefesh, a woman should not, should not eat food and then nurse a baby because the food will end up being metam to life. So there's no, she's allowed to eat the food and she's a mitzvah to eat the food because it's Pihuach Nefesh. So that would seem that it's the food that does it, not the Avera. But the language of the Gemara is Avera metam temes li b'shalom and Avera is metam. Okay, so we left that unresolved. But if it's the if it's the Avera, so then you can't say where it's bottle. There's no Avera. That's for sure. There's no Avera where it's bottle. So you can't say that the, that there's bit alive if you're eating something non kosher. It has a little bit of tarfus. I mean, it's not true anyway. The OU does not rely on bittel. That, that <laughs> only in extent, the Avid, if something went wrong, we would rely on bittel. But it's a rare. So the um, but if you say that it's the it's the not the avera but it's the like the Masil Sharm said it's because the food becomes part of your body so then it, it, then you could argue that maybe even though it's bottle maybe it's still matamtem as a life so last week we saw a machlokas between the iser veheter and the uh, sefer called solos uh whether or not is the person allowed to be machmer. If a person does, if, if it's batal b'shishim, are you allowed to be machmer and not eat the food? So the um, the uh, the sefer isher v'heter says that you're allowed to be machmer because it's a harchik atzmi called davar dvar kiyor harishus biyado. That's the that's the piece in the middle of the page. At the end of the area that I underlined, it says. If you don't want to rely on bittel, you could because you, it's mechor. You, you you don't want to make the with tarfus. The on the other hand, there's a sefer called Sol Semincha, who quotes the Torah Sasham. Torah Sasham is a commentary on the Torah Shatas, which was written by the Ramah. The Torah Sasham was written by the Tosis Yantiv, and he says that if you decide to be machmir. If you look at why you're on the line, because of the Torah Sashem, the Das, Amari, Marashal, Harotzel, Achmir, Linhog, Isser, Bidar, Shalom, Tzina, Shechmir, Amarayim. If you want to be more from than the Amarayim, Kagom, Mash, and his battle, Bishishim, of a Klisheni, if something's battle, or it's a Klisheni, which is no absorption, Havi Kamal Minas, the Yatsa Schar of Yasei, though, you're not Picarus, because you're saying, the Chazal, they, 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 they were they, you know better than they know. The Yisra Vihater says that it's that it's uh, that it's okay. That's what we just saw. That's in the middle of the page. But he says that it's not okay. So it's a machlokus whether you ought to be machmer. So I want to show you. So they still they don't talk about in terms of Tim Tamalev. It's possible that the reason to be machmer. It's not because of Tim Tamalev. Maybe the Yisra Vihater holds. He says it's it's mechur, it's kior, it's something that's like putrid or offensive. 
You don't have anything to, we don't, we, with the tarifus. If, 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 if a person who's kosher observant is forced to eat tarifus, they would they would throw up. And I think they would rather jump off the roof than, than eat something trade. And there were people in the Holocaust that were starving to death and they wouldn't touch. Kleisenberger. Kleisenberg, well, many people. Kleisenberg. He, he never ate that. Never anything to trade. But even uh, even regular people, they just they could. Tea, he bring it down his bar, he wouldn't drink the boiled water from a can because the can was not toy Who, the Kleisenberger? Yeah. He ate a potato, the potato uh -huh. was something he ate. Okay, so, so for, 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 yeah. if, if something is legal, in, in fact, it, it's like it's not providing a tom, it's just not providing anything. So, therefore, why would you think that we'd have Tipsum Halev if there isn't enough? So, you know, what's it Vito? Because maybe Bito only is a very, very good question. It's a fundamental question. If it's but what's the Svarat to say to Tipsum Halev if it's yeah. Bito? Right. The answer is that Bito yeah. is only on the Yisr. But the, that doesn't change the Metzius. It's still Chazer. You're allowed to eat the Chazer because it's Bato, it loses its identity, but it's still Chazer. And there's riots that even when something is Bato, it doesn't completely lose its identity because one riot, for example, is the Dinah Chazer If you take an eyedropper and you, you're making soup and you decide, wow, this will taste good if I put a little Chazer in. So you first put in one drop and then another drop. So slowly the drops add up and now and then all of a sudden you overdid yourself and now it's now it's no longer bottle bashishim. So do you say that once it became bottle it's no longer chazer and therefore it doesn't matter what do I care now that there's that there's less than shishim but it's, but the, the ones that came preceded that already so the answer is no it's 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 chosen in there. It rejuvenates itself. The reason and as far as I'm saying because the Siba is there is still there. It's still chazer. It's just that the chazer when it's bottle doesn't there's no whisper to eat it, but it okay. So, but that's a very good point you're raising. So, I want to show you. Um, so, the the only safer that I could find that says that this Timtum Halev is is a tshuva written by Rabbi Menashe Klein in a series called Mishnah Halachos, and I'll show it to you later on. But he he is commenting on a a piece in the safer called Benei Soscher. The Nei Soschar was the um, Dineva Rebbe. His name was not Yisoschar. His name was Tzvi Elimelech. Why, why did he call his Sefer Bnei Yisoschar? Because he was a Talmud of the Choseh Milublin. And the Choseh, who was known, the reason why he was called the Choseh, which means a uh, prophet or a seer, is because he was known to have Ruach HaKodesh. And he could tell you, when he looked at you, he could tell you what you ate for breakfast and other things. So the Chose, the Chose told him that he was a uh, Gilgal of Yisachar. Yisachar was the Shevet of, um, uh, of Torah. Yisachar Chamar Goren. So he, 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 Yisachar was the, uh, the source of Torah. And, and throughout the Sefer, he talks constantly about Chachma and the Talmud Chachamim or Chachma. So he considered him, based on what the Rebbe told him, he was a descendant of Yisachar, so he called the Sefer Bnei Yisachar. Mm -hmm. This is a extremely, as Chassidish Shesvarim go, this is one of the top ten classics, is the Bnei Yisachar, the Noam Elimelech. These are very classical Chassidish Shesvarim. And we'll see, in this, in this piece that I'm going to show you, is one of the most fundamental elements of Chassidic thought. So here he says like this, um, he says, uh, If you the second line on the on page two, in the middle of the line, This is how it is in all things. Anasim tachzashemish, you do have mevinim. It's known to those people who understand. Beinian klipas noga, ushlosh klipos hat meos. It took me a, a while to figure out what this means. The um, a klipa means that. In, in, in Olam Hazeh, everything has a klipa because the, the essence of everything is, is, ruch, is ruchnius, but the ruchnius is not visible. That God didn't want it to be visible. Then people would have no bechira. So he concealed it. It's, the ruchnius is concealed within the, the object. The, a, 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 a person, and especially a Jew, is able to, to expose the, the ruchnius. So you, for example, you could take an animal hide 
and and smear it up a certain way and then write on it with ink and you turn it into a Sefer Torah and it's holy. Where did the holiness come from? It, it, it was it was embedded in there and at least this is the way the Hasidic Swarim would look at it. It was embedded in there the whole time but it was concealed. So you're able uh, 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 you're able to expose you're able to take the nister and make it nigla. That's the way you can express it. So the, everything has a, a klipas noga, which means a covering of dull light. There's, even when th- things that are neutral, they have a, a, a klipa, <coughs> there's kedusha within, within every neutral thing, but it's, it's covered by this klipa, which he calls klipas noga, noga means a dull light. And then on the other extreme is shalosh klipos at tameos. Things that are that are usher have three levels of klipa, and that's because the uh, it's much harder. You can't access the even something that's that's, that's treif has kedusha, but it's not accessible. That's why the Torah made it treif. In fact, I saw in one place it says the word usher comes from the word uh, chains. Uh, the, uh, the, the 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 of kedusha are chained within the uh, thing that's also yeah. 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 so you 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 can't you can't um, extract it. He's going to say later on the rebbeinu shalom could extract it, but we human beings can't get to it. If we try to extract it, we end up becoming tummy. We go we go into the into the depths of the tumba, and then we end up being tummy. So he says everything has either klipas noga. Or three klipas of tuma. I guess the reason why three klipas it means it, it, it's like a triple layer of, of klipa. So that makes it tummy. Asher koha yanim hasurim heim min gimel klipas tameos. Anything that's also has these three klipas, which again I'm saying in, in, in simpler language means that the, uh, the, the whatever sparks of kedusha are are, are are triply concealed. But something that's mutter only has this klipa of noga, which is not, which is like a a, a, a much easier klipa to penetrate. The 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 the, 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 the soul of a of a Jewish person also has potential kedusha, but it has this klipa of noga. If a person uses his intellect to to utilize the physical world for Hashem and the Torah, then the the the, the, the what others call this the insights of kedusha, but the the this, the, the kedusha that's there. Is revealed and and it becomes exposed. He says, It goes into the into the inner sanctuary that's holy. The person eats food in order to get have koyach. And why does he need koach? Not because he wants to lift, lift weights. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not the reason. But he's lavodas Hashem is baruch. Oz misala, ozai misal hachi yishal meicha hu el hakodesh. Then those those um, the the that the the chias because every there's everything has chias from hakodesh baruch hu. Everything is 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 exists only because hakodesh baruch hu wills it. So that and that's the sort basis of the kedusha. So that becomes elevated. But if you're eating because you're a glutton and you, you don't care anything about kedusha, then it goes it goes in the opposite direction. Then it gets concealed. Even through, you took an apple, which was all it had was one klipas noga, but now that you used it. To um, to satisfy physical desire, then then it it it, it diminishes or or it, it makes the kedusha even more concealed. The nimsa nichol noga begimul klipa satmeis. Then the the noga, which is the this faint level of klipa that that uh, that that uh, covers the kedusha, it gets submerged into the 
three clipas of tumor. But you could reverse it. You could decide, oh, okay, I, 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 I slipped, but I'm going to use now the delicious meal that I had of hot dogs and hamburgers and cherry pie. I'm going to use that, that energy in order to serve your money. So then it gets reversed. I skipped the two lines, three lines because I didn't understand it. If you use it, if you use the food in order to serve Hashem, so let's say a guy's a big chacham and he says, "Look, I'll do the same thing. I'll take something treif and I'll use the trait." That was Shapsi Tzvi who believed in that. That you could, you, he, he, he or he or his Talmidim, they 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 believed that you could take incest and elevate it to, for kedusha. So he said, person will say, I'm going to take the, the Isser and I'll, I'll fix it up. If it's Isser, it has these three Klipos. It's completely bad. It has to be destroyed. You won't be able to bring it into a situation of holiness. Even though, even something that's treif has to have sparks of Kedusha. It has to, because everything, because the Pesach says, the it, it, it sustains everything. So everything is connected to Rebbe Shalom. So and 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 really, it would be preferable to be able to extract the good from the food that's usher. The Rebbeinu knows that it's impossible for us to do. Then, then, then we'll end up being. We're trying to, to, to elevate the klipas. The klipas will, will denigrate us. We have to stick with the kosher food. When you, when you, when you elevate it, so if, you, if we do the right thing, then eventually Kodesh Baruch Hu is going to Extract the, the kedusha that's inherent even in foods that are tame. The yivul at hamavas lenetzach umol haaretz deya. Deya Hashem. In fact, so I'm just going to pause here for a few moments. With I want to show you something that I didn't ever know, but somebody mentioned to me. It's fascinating. If you look on on page four, as he say, he says that God is going to. T- it, we can't access the kedusha from things that are from chazer, but but there is kedusha in chazer. You just you can't get to it. It's so deeply submerged. So did you know that it lost the level of yalti it chazer? Anybody know? Yeah, yeah. You knew reversed, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it says here in the Arachaim. The um, the Arachaim Makadosh says on page four. It says. The Chumash says, if you look why I underline, it says that Kol Mafras Parsav Shesas Sheshe Prosas Malz Gerer Bebehem Also Tocheu. If if an animal has two signs, split hooves and it regurgitates its food, so then it it's kosher. And then five seconds later, it says V'Sachazer Ki Mafras Parsav Shesas Sheshe Prosas Gerer Lo Yigar. But the Chazer, even though it has a split hoof, but it's but it's not Malz Gerer. So the Rachaim says on the left side. It should have said that about the Chazer in the very in the very next pasuk. Because after it says that it has to have my first pasuk then it says you shouldn't eat these things. That the 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 camel kimal geru parsi mafris. It has it has one sign that's a shafa and kimal scare it also is is mal scare it's a nevis but it leaves all the way to the end it leaves it leaves chazer so he says the reason why it isolates chazer or diacha klal remish afila chazer bechlal it's because really chazer is is included in the original pasuk that says something that's my freshest pasuk shalasa sessa you could eat how so al derech amram zal 
Why is it called a chazer? It will return. When it said in the beginning, it meant to include even the chazer. Because there will be a time where right now the chazer only has one simon, but there will be a time when it has two simon. And then he says the same thing in the next piece. Vuhu gera go yigar pirish. Tanai hu adover kozman shuhu go yigar. The pasuk says that the chazer is shosas shesa vuhu gera go yigar, but it, and it has it, it doesn't have it doesn't it doesn't show its cut. So why does it say vuhu gera? So he says that it's to emphasize that it's only um, temporary. The go yigar. Abu lasid lavo yala gera v'yachsel yos muter v'lo she go yishar she yishar v'lo gera v'yuter kitara lo. To, to, uh, to it, it, it's going to become kosher. The reason why it'll become kosher is because it's going to end up being ma'al Because it, the, the, excuse me, the yaksu means that it once had, it once was kosher. That's a very hard language. I don't know why you're asking why yaksu yeah. implies that it once was. It I don't know. Early yeah. Maybe, I don't know. When God created the world, maybe, I don't know. But he's saying that it, it's going to end up having this amount of. What? The, the genetic pigs in the Philippines, but they, is, is that a skin of your head? Are the genetic pigs what? That are Malagera? That are Yeah, maybe. Wow. It could be. I mean, it's not hard to do. Uh -huh. Okay. So, anyway, the reason why I'm showing this to you. Rabbein of Echaya, he says it's, it's in the Chazal. Where is this Chazal that says that the that the Chazer is going to become kosher? Alderach Amram Zal. Where is the Zal? So they say that it's a medrash that the Rebbeinu Vichaya quotes a medrash, and the medrash says that um, the medrash says um, if you look, I didn't underline it, but in the paragraph in Rebbeinu Vichaya, the bottom paragraph, Vyesh Nusl Shekosov Asa Kadosh Baruch Hachsalano. The, 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 there's a nusach in the Tanchuma that says God is going to return the chazer to us. And many people think that means it's going to eventually become tar again. But it doesn't really mean. He says the the chazer represents the um, the the nations that oppress the Jewish people. Even the nations that are that are, hate right. the Jews, they will be turned around. So that's what it means, that the Chazer, because in, in the piece before, the Medjur says that all the different animals here, each one is reflective of a different Malchus. The Gamal is, is Babo, the Shafan is Yavan, the Arnevis is Madai, and the Chazer is Malchus Kolos Harvi. Okay, so anyway, well, but I, what I, the reason why I'm showing this to you is because why? Why is it that the what? What? what it, why? Why would the Kaddish Baruch Hu do that? He's going to change the the Chazer around. That'll be Malgeira in order that we could eat it. Why is he going to? So it's because there's there there. It, it's the, uh, based on the Bnei Sos. It's understandable because there is inherent kedusha even in the Chazer, and the Rebbeinu Shalom wants it to be exposed. So then he says. Vehine, look where I have the bar further down. Vadvarn Tumuim. He said, Everything in the Olam Haza, you have to extract the good from the bad. On page two. The, um, the, so, Achilo Shtia, the whole in Yone Olam Haza, that's the secret of, of eating and drinking. The whole in Yone Olam Haza, the Echo Adam Esat at Simea, Achrachai, Oz. When a person eats, the food becomes part of the individual. And he's animated by the food. And he's able to use the food to serve Hashem. But there's nonetheless, there's still part of the food that is even further away. It's even, you can't even extract that collusion. That's the psolos. So psolos, that's why... The uh, the body when digestion it, it excretes the the waste products. He needs bar tov mineral, and when a person eats that way, then the tov is 
separated from the bad. He's repeating what he said before, that even something that's trafe has to have nitzotz of Kedushot. Even though it's concealed by these three klipos of Tuma, even the klip itself has its source in the Rebbe Nishol. But, it, but the, it's locked inside, and there's no way for this bearer to take place, this, this separation. So how, we, we can understand from Yitzhiya Mitzrayim how it's going to take place. The purpose of Gaus Mitzrayim, the Yitzvarim say there, the Mekubam say, it's because in Mitzrayim there were in the Tzotzus of Kedusha, and the Jewish people had to extract those nitzotzos from Mitzrayim. V'hine nemar mechamushim alo b'nei Yisrael meretz Mitzrayim v'darshabo echel mechamishim. Some say that the Arizal says chamushim means that they... Um, One-fifth. No, they says... Four-fifth line. There's a different Pesach. Uh, okay, that says that they took out the nitzotzos. So he says, v'darshabo echel mechamishim ki meisel harishoyim b'nei begimu yom ha'afeo that the Mishoyim died in those three days in in the end of the days it says that those people who were pushed aside from Eretz Mitzrayim, they will return so it means that those because those people the they 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 the the they died during the the period of of Choshech, but they, they their need to also also will have to be eventually emerge. You see, it's the time of Hashem Baruch Why did Hashem Baruch Hu rush you to see his time? Why didn't he wait for the bearer, for even for the evil people? Because they couldn't stay there there longer. The height of bearer, he says, because they already reached the Shar Hanun, the Klipa Vezeinu Moser Biadeinu. He adder of a Chas V'Shalom Yuchel Ishtakeiav. Um, if we if we try to be mevar the kedusha of something that's tamei, we will get corrupted. will have a time when the end when when there'll be the end of the process. After the Torah lists all the things that are treif, so but we, what, what's going to be with the with the with the kedusha in the treif animals if you can't eat them? So So that's why at the end of the parsha in 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 Shmini, at the end of the parsha it says that I'm the one that took the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim. And, and me, what, the, what, what does it have to do with Jesus Mitzrayim? It's because in Jesus Mitzrayim, they had to leave behind the 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 Rishayim that had elements of Kedusha that were submerged. I'll call that a lie had The Rishayim is saying, don't worry, I'll take care of it. You know, you, you think, a person can say, I'm going to eat tarfus so I can be mala than the Tzotzis. God said, don't, don't be such a wise guy. I'll, you leave it alone, and just like when the Mitzrayim, the Rishayim died, but then afterwards, the Uvohu over the Meretz Hashem and the Dachim Meretz Hashem, they will return. So the Rishon says, "I'm going to take out the Nitzotzes from the Chazer and the, all the other trade animals." Ve'enze michol kanushi kenu adar v'chol yanim ha'asurim api atora yodei Hashem yisbarish ene b'birbazem michol kanushi v'adar b'asoka adam b'hem levar adar mi. Tishtaka nafsha chas shomem. The person is going to end up getting corrupted. Okay, then, then here's where we're leading up to. In the next paragraph, he says, He says, So we have a kasha. If it's true that things that are trafe, even though they have nitzotz of kedusha, but they're covered up with these three layers of Tuma, and we can't extract them. So how could it be that there's bittel? How could there be bittel if the if the if the if the if part of the food that's treif is 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 is, is uh, enclosed in the encapsulated in these three layers of klipa? Why is it that the Torah says something you're allowed to eat heter that became bottle? If you have bittel b'shishim, 
Oh, you have a shirov, or things that are dry, or even about the barov, you know. So why, what happened to the, to the klipa? I will take the shuhumi machshava satsur, tam muiz bar shavo yadei asha nitzus hatoman baose chaticha asura, the yichu yochus bar yadei yadeinu. The reason why God allows things to become bottle is because he knows that it's possible for man to extract the nitzus of kedusha. But but the problem is that if you're going to try to extract it, you're going to become corrupted. So he also by having bito, now you're not eating something that's also you're eating something that's mutter. But this bar hanitzas says that the purpose of bito is to make the 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 the, the iser accessible. And in the reverse, things that, that are that are neutral and have the 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 clip of this faint light, the, the purpose of it is that a Jew should extract the kedusha from them. The, 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 sometimes things that are kosher become treif. You're making the chicken soup and you pour it in too much lard. So why did why did God allow that to happen? It's because he he knew that God felt that the 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 the, 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 the kosher part he, he is too hard for us to extract the uh, the, the nitosis. So he made the whole thing treif. Or the same thing with an animal. The reason why, if you shecht an animal and it turns out to be treifa, the reason why God allows that is because he didn't want us to eat those animals. So, first of all, this reflects a in Hasidus. I mean, everybody believes this, but it, 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 the Baal Shem Tov emphasizes and, and his Talmidim then nothing in the world happens just randomly. There's no such thing as random. So Baal Shem Tov said, if you meet somebody in the street, you, 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 I go on this train every day. I probably see, you know, like everybody else, uh, hundreds of people. Every single one of those people is the reason why you see them. It, no, nothing's random. I mean, sometimes you, you, most of the time you have no idea why. Sometimes you end up talking to somebody. So, so you, there's a reason why you have that conversation and, but but that's a Baal Shem. It's every single thing in, in in the in creation. It's not that God allows things to to just randomly happen uh, on their own. Now, everything has a reason. So this is in line with that type of thinking. That why would the Rebbeinu Shalom allow um, non kosher food to become kosher? It's it, it's not it's not because the person put it in there accidentally. It's because God wanted that that food should be uh, liberated, so to speak, so that you should be able to eat the, the, the tarfus. And, and, and in reverse, when something kosher, when the people call me up every day, I put a fleshika spoon in the milk of the pot, and, and they have to throw away the food, it's because, I, I don't tell them, but I should tell them, don't worry, God didn't want you to eat that, that chicken soup. That's why he had you, he orchestrated that you put a milk of a spoon into the chicken soup, so you wouldn't eat it, because it, the the nitosis there are too deeply submerged. Rabbi, I don't call you every day, every other day. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people who call me every day. <laughs> he says, the hey, look what he says here. Um Umiata Tove and Hodim Mufursa Medire the the paragraph on the top of page three. Ro behemus ksherusain. Khazal say the most the majority of animals are kosher. She says, nowadays, it's, the, it's not true anymore. Most animals, when you shech them and you do bedikas, they're treif. So he says, why is that? Because I'll say most animals are kosher. He says, Achu l'dayti b'dar sakad mano ha'yeh v'ruach b'rov anitzis ha'kedusha hu b'china satov b'socham. In the olden days, the kedusha was more easily acceptable. Why yaksher is kedesh yochum yisrael? God wanted the Jews to eat those animals. Right? Most of the tov. Why? Why? Why is there so much bad around today? Because most of the tov already was extracted. By the end of the ikus meshicha, she chutz biyaski. So I know hara who biyoser. But when meshicha is going to come, the the evil is more predominant. 
Al Kane, Al Piharosh, Habe Amos, Atahoros, the Dauphin, Bechlesh, Yochum, Bene Shah. That's true. Nowadays, Rob Amos and Akshiros. Why does that bother you? Well, it's true that the, the, in a Schlacht house, especially in the, in where, where they're doing Glatt, maybe only 20% of the animals are kosher. I don't know, remember the exact statistic, but it's it's less uh, glot, and even kosher is even non glot. I think it's maybe forty percent. It's a very high. You can't run a, a schlacht house if you're not connected with a tray for meat operation because you're going to lose. You go out of business, so they they sell it for they use it for tar- tray hmm. So the. They sell it to another company who uses that. Yeah. They, it's usually, not they sell it to another country. The, 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 the kosher yeah. schlacht houses usually go into, go into a trade for company and they they allow them to check kosher, but whatever's not kosher, they use, uh, Purdue uses it for the trade. But we didn't, you happen to be a shokri and whatever you, you don't get to do the right to speak at the right time and you're sitting there, do we not pass them like the shogri anymore? Oh, so the so the truth is that a number of far mass. How in the world could the Bnei Yisrael say there's no more rove? If there's no more rove, then you couldn't eat anything because they, we don't do what we're not biting because Yudches Trefus. We're relying on rove, not not to be donated. So what? Now there's no rove, and also you shouldn't be able to drink milk because the reason why you could drink milk from a Trefus, you're not allowed to drink. So why do we drink milk? Because most behemoths are kosher. So that's what they ask. So I saw somebody says, he doesn't mean to say that there's really no rov. He, he just means to say that Lumaisa, we end up, the, because of, because we don't know how to do Bdikas properly, so therefore we end up with, with uh, it's real, really, those animals that we make trafe are really not trafe. But but the Rebbe made it that we, we should think they're trafe. We, we should we have difficulty doing the Bdika. Right. Like the, like the spoon of the chicken soup. Hashem made it trait so we, because... So we shouldn't eat it. Because, it because it's... It, 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 nowadays, the the, 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 the nitsotsus that are left are much harder to get out because there's more ra than tov. And therefore, he wanted them to stay submerged until God himself will, will, will extract them later on. Did they really also throw out? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's not. The birds are not more kosher there than here. <laughs> so, th- so now here's the here's the the bombshell is the last paragraph. In case you thought that so far it's not exciting enough. <laughs> <laughs> this paragraph, the second paragraph, he says now you should you should understand. Since the reason why there's bittul barov is not accidentally, it's because God, or, or just like by, 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 by a person who goes into Golas, God made it, it was somebody that, that really was Chayv uh, Misa, because he killed somebody without aid him, and so God said, you know what, you will, uh, you'll, you'll climb up a ladder and you'll kill somebody, and then you'll end up, accidentally, you'll end up in Golas. So he, he didn't kill him accidentally, God arranged it that he should fall off the ladder and kill him. So he says, so similarly, when the, the, God made it that it was bottle, he says, therefore, since God arranged it that it should be bittle, there's a mitzvah to eat it. And you're not allowed to be machmir. Mar says a person who 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 is uh, benefits from his own t- t- toil is greater than having your shemaim. So what does that mean? To the shalos, so he says, "Pirush is our rav kodesh shalos." And then a migiyah migiyo haino sheyiga as asu b'torah. The yigiyah that we're talking about is not that you you planted seeds or something like that. It means that you that you start you you worked hard on learning the Torah. V'yadei lahachsha meichal zeh al pitorah. And and you're able to figure out how to make it kosher. You're, you're able to make it kosher according to the column of Torah. So that's 
that's greater than Yari Shemayim. And there's a person with Yari Shemayim, he's going to make everything treif. Oh, I, I'm not sure. This is probably treif. This is probably treif. But, but that's not the ideal. The ideal is that you should make a kosher. But other mazel, ocho hamachu v'nehem imenu, hine hu gadol min hayari shemayim hamachmer. Somebody that eats the, the product that has bitl is greater than the, than the person's machmer. But who could the vreinu mamre? She has a davar azeh, deceive me as Hashem is barash, is barah meichel. That it happened, it was orchestrated by Kodesh Baruch intentionally in order that the, 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 the iser should be liskos yichashu adam ha'ocha al piyatara the, it, it, that the person should eat it, and then he is bar, he is bar, and eats the sakdoshes, and then the nitzotzes will be revealed. Who gadol me yar shemaim shenu rotsu lechol mitam sheish bal taru v'sisser, and the 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 the, the, the yar guy, the, the guy who's so from, he doesn't want to eat it because he, yeah. but he's do, he's doing a disservice. Al kein ledaiti hatzira ein zemides hachasidus, mashakama noshim nogim sulsul batsim. Some people. They take pride. Shul olecho min shul meichel shayelav sheilus chacham that they don't want to eat a food that had a they were holer about chacham. Agam shul davar pashim mavur din elheter kagani they tevrus shishim ikiyotze. They even if it's a simple shayel they don't want to be. They once the chacham touches it they don't want to get involved. He ladaiti adarav a mitzvah yochu anavim yisbal. He who nesiva meis hashem yisbar sheyosher yisrael elheter viyisbar aydei achilas yisrael. So. This is his chiddush that that, you're, that in other words the the machlokas the isur behetter said that if you um, that you're allowed to be machmer if you don't want to if you don't want to rely on bittul it's fine because it's davar mechur it's uh, obnoxious offensive so you don't want to have anything to do with it and the and the solos of mincha and the um, taras al asham said that if you don't eat it you're not pikaris because the halach is it's mutter. So it comes along the, the B'nai Yisrael and said, not only you apikaris, but you completely, you don't understand the dynamics of what's going on. Yeah. The um, So I just, I, I want to, okay, I don't have much time. I want to just point out th- this whole, this whole, this whole idea of, I said before that this is, this is one of the core ideas in Hasidus that you could, you could take Nitzotas and, and elevate them. And that's the, this whole enterprise of Shirayim yeah. is exactly that. And the Rebbe, since the Rebbe is capable, because of his level, extract. he's able to extract the, the Kedusha. So once he, he extracts, if he has a big bowl of rice, he takes one spoon, so the, the, the sparks are already jumping out. So then they divide it up among all the Hasidim, and they're all able to... Um, but, but this idea that you could take something so mundane and find the Tzotzis, I think, and I didn't see the same, but this is my, um, this is what I think. Hasidus came about because for the plain people, there were people that felt they had, there were there were great people, there were geniuses and gaonim and major tamiyachem, but the pshutayam, they worked, they, you know, they didn't have a chance to to sit and learn like we do nowadays, come home at six o'clock and do dafyomi. They were so exhausted and they trying to eke out a living, and they and they were amaratzim, they were ignorant. And they felt d- d- disconnected. They they were de- dejected, disenfranchised from Yehudas. Comes along the Baal Shem Tov, and the, he was able to find the Tzotzis and Kedushas all over the place, in, especially in people. He was able to. T- and there's all these Hasid- you know the famous Hasidic story about the the boy that um, the boy that uh, that he came to he didn't know how to daven and he came to shul. And, and he whistled on Rosh Hashanah, and people got, hey, what are you doing? And the Baal Shem Tov said, stop it. His, his, his whistling, there was a gzera in Shemayim, and, and when he whistled, I couldn't, I couldn't undo the gzera. When he whistled, the gzera went away. So the beauty of that story is that here he's saying that this plain boy, he, he didn't even know the Aleph base. All he knew how to do was whistle on Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Kippur, and, and, and he's, this, he, 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 he's a great person. He's saving the day. And and the Hasidic Rebbe's they have this special ability to be misyachas to everybody as the as if they're the most important person in the world. I mean, I've been to a lot of Hasidic Rebbe's. That's their forte. They they're able to because they're they're constant. Their focus is on those nitzotzos on on the element of good that's within embedded within the person. So it's not only the the food is just is 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 even less. Less so, but even even in the food, they're able to find the tzotzes, and and the, and even they sauces. Even in tray for food, you could find the tzotzes. Remember, we learned a few weeks ago that the, the Gemara says I, I copied it here 
that the the Bnei Banim, the, the grandchildren, the great grandchildren of, of Haman were learning Torah in Bnei Brak, and the and the grandchildren of Sistro were learning were were Rebbeim in Yushlaim, and the grandchildren of Sancheira were learning Torah Brahman that was Shemayim Atayin. So, and I I showed you there was a sefer that said, what's the reason for that? Why why with all these people who were Shemayim, why were they Zaycha to have descendants that were Tzadikim? So, but I would say it's because it shows that even somebody who uh, 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 who, who who live their lives in the way that there, there's no kedusha coming out of them. There, there's all it's pure evil. But even in such a person, there has to be an element of kedusha because it, e- even that person is a, is a tzel melkim. So there, it has to emerge. So it didn't emerge when when in Sancheir or in Haman, but it emerged generations later. I think it's a beautiful idea. So that's the this idea that the 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 the. So he's taking it to to its logical extreme that even even something that's treif, when it's bottle, there's a mitzvah to eat it because you're you're able to be mild in its tzitzis. So you send it to, to this guy in uh, in Eretz Yisrael. No, I didn't. Yeah, I should send it to. He's probably a litvak. He won't. He's he's, 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 he's he liberating the nitzotzis from the chala, and then once. I mean, I don't know how it works exactly, but once he, once, it's like when once he get one pickle out of the jar, they all come out. So once he's once he's already got the nitzotzos coming out, so everybody could uh, grab, grab some. Of them. Grab some. So I, I said in my email that I sent about the, this morning. I said well, I, when I was by the um, the um, which rebbe was it the, um, the stole your rebbe? Did anybody ever see the stole your rebbe? Probably not. You saw him, yeah. He looked like a malach. He was unbelievable. So you ready? I was like seven years old. You were seven years old. I I was uh, twenty five. I went. Yeah. He, if I got before I got married, I went to him for a bracha because my wife's family, my my brother in law was close to him. He the slow you rebbe told me that that um, when he was a um, he he his thing was he used to they they and Shabbos by Kiddush. They, 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 anybody who wanted to could give the Rebbe a Pasuk and he would darshan on the Pasuk. So he, ta- so he would darshan three different Mahalchim on the Pasuk instantaneously without even thinking about it. It just, it just flowed. So he told me that in Europe he used to do instead of three, he used to do seven Mahalchim and, and, and they, you know, they would pick the most obscure Pasuk that uh, has a Shafan or whatever, you know, has a Chazer. So, he was. I think he told me seven, but he says now they don't have patience, so he only does. Uh, <laughs> only does three. But the, um, the he ta- in his he in, in, he gave. I have a safer from the scholar. He's in the safer. He talks about his father. He says was was a super holy person. He said the his father. This made an impression on me. His father the week be, the the Shabbos before he was nifter. So he was he was he he he, he was laying the the uh, he had the aliyah uh, in parshas titzav v'nishma kol bevol al kodesh, and when he came to that pasuk, he kept on repeating it over and over again. And that week he was he was nifter. So it's like v'nishma kol bevol al kodesh. He was referring to himself that his call should be bevol al kodesh. Okay, these are great people. The but that's it's 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 not just um, kabbalah, but it's part of this. Whole of making everything, and that's why Hasidim are very makbid on minhagim, much more than 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 the misnagdim, because that's that's they 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 hold on to everything is so precious because that's the whole the whole philosophy is everything has chashivas, even the simplest thing it has, and even when you're eating, you know, when we eat to eat, it's just you know, even if we either we eat because we enjoy the food or we eat because we have to eat and you gobble it down. <laughs> By them, it's a whole religious ceremony, taking the food and, and uh, elevating. I mean, the Rambam says when you eat, you're supposed to do it with Hashem Shemayim. But the, the Hasidim have been able to uh, perfect this uh, to an extreme. So, but the last thing I want to show you is the is the uh, the Sefer Mishnah Halachas from Rav... Um, the Mishnah Halachos, page five, yeah, is, uh, my memory is fading me. Who's the Mishnah Halachos? It's the, um, okay, it'll come to me in a few minutes. It's Rav Nasha Klein, Rav Nasha Klein, thank you. So, the, so he says here, he quotes, he quotes the B'nai Yisachar. You see, in the beginning of the page, he says, the first line that I have underlined, 
Okay, he, he quotes the, the, the whole piece that we learned, that, that, that there's a mitzvah to eat things that are treif. So he says... Um, we're treif. Yeah, we're treif. And then, and then he says, and then he asks, how could you say, he says that most of the behemoths today are treif. He says that can't be because then you wouldn't be able to eat the, the, drink the meat and eat the meat. But he, he, I'm going to just skip to the, to the end. Um... He says, um, look, at, look at the last paragraph. Um, no, is this what I want? No, that's not what I wanted. Um, oh, here's what I want. In the, in the, in the left column, the, uh, the, the 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 first paragraph. Here he 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 he's disagreeing. He brings a raya. The the the, the says that that the that the the the, the tra- that it's a mitzvah to eat it because the treif becomes elevated. He says, how could that be? According to some rishonim, when you have a taruvis of lach of yavish biyavish, you're not allowed to eat all three pieces. If you have three pieces. You're only allowed to eat two. You can't eat the third one because the third, one of them is definitely treif. And so he says, you see that it doesn't, that bittel doesn't mean that the treif becomes mutter. It, it's still also, it's just, you, you're allowed to eat it because the hochen acharov. You, you. So then he says, V'raylu divreinu eilu, nira midivrei hachinuch, b'din lo tesayv mitzri. Shomer Torah, shalom l'sarach l'sarach v'mitzri, mihizchatim of dorshish. You're not allowed to, to, uh, reject the mitzvah okay. more than three generations. Achish Yisrael, because of Chinuch, Val Tishma Vidirenu Shania Mitzuvim Hizchatei Mitzri. Don't think that because the Torah said you're allowed to marry an Egyptian, mm-hmm. therefore it's a mitzvah to marry them. Oim Hadomim Achish Yimadarish Ein Kavanos Akosov Gitzavoseinu Hizchatei Imoim Chalila. Torah doesn't say mean to say that you the mechuyiv to marry them. You have chashim families; they don't have to lower themselves or lower their madrega to marry into an Egyptian family. But the the Torah said that that for three generations I ought to intermarry with them. But the Torah is just telling you that you're allowed to, if you want to, you're allowed to, but not that there's a mitzvah. So he says, 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 you see that something that is not, it's not, it's not, it's not a, right, it's not ideal. The heim ha mitzrim v'adumim, that's, I don't even know, I don't know if it's today's mitzrim of the same status, I don't know. Sheheim ene mizera Yisra ha-kadoshim, ha-gam shetara hetirum l'schatim, even though the Torah said you're allowed to marry them, acher ha-geris v'azman ha-mukhubim ha-torah, v'omr sheheim ha-sir m'schatim ha-machazel over b'lav, and if you say that you're not allowed to marry them, you'd be you're violating a, a law of, of, of not lo to save mitzri. Mikom akom leka mitzli yisrael kedoshim yishatim hem adra lo yir the chasasham yibalosim they yisrael kedoshim yishatim. It would be better not to marry them because that's what the that's what the chinuch says. Because they're pechusim malah be yichus hamishpach roy yishatim hem. So hachinami, this is the part I want to show you. Hachinami, amar ani lo inyan bittel berov hagam shetar amar the davar tamei mitam to misalev. But Torah, Rasa, even though something that's tamei, something that's treif is mitam tam halev, and the Torah said it's also im nafel behetim is matul mutal lachol. The Torah said you're allowed to eat it. But omer dasa lachol over al hadu acher amal hatas. And if you say it's also to eat it, then you, 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 it's apikorsis to say that it's also to eat it because it's not also it's mutter. Av mikom akom imu yadei shadaver mutter el sheni rotsa lachol mishum daver hatamei shen is marvo shehu achshav. Because he, if he doesn't want to eat it, because he knows there's a, 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 something that's usher in there, umikom makom harehu mitamte mesalev, and even though it's bottle, it's still mitamte mesalev, uparish miyumenu mitamze, leke bezei yisrkal. There's no usher, because he doesn't want to eat it, because it's because it's timta mesalev. Va'adra, but who also dover tov, but mesh she'en no ochel, he's doing good thing. Kevin shu parish atzlo mitzad teva yisr shu that mitamte mesalev, lo mitam shu usher min Torah. So he's saying a very big that he's saying that that since, since the the, the, the tarfus doesn't become it's not 
He says it's a machlokus whether 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 the iser is nisapach he also has to. But if you if you say that the iser doesn't become hetter, so, so then it, so then it's still it's still metam thing. You know you have a hetter to eat it. It's going to be metam thing. So therefore he says that it would be um, it would be it it, it 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 would be better not to eat it. So I I have a big kash on him. First of all, the shulchan aruch. In in that I showed you last week about chol of mitzvahs, it says that you shouldn't let a, a child nurse from a mitzvah. And also, if a woman is 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 a chol sheish and she has to eat tarfas, you shouldn't let her nurse. The shulchan says you shouldn't you shouldn't do it. You know, even though it's pikuach nefesh, so she's allowed to to eat the tarfas, but you shouldn't let her nurse the child because it's going to have a bad impact on him. It's going to hurt his midos when he gets older. So how come? Uh, uh, if the Shulchan Aruch went out of its way to say for that one case that you shouldn't do it because it's mitam tame, so there's there's about ten simanim in Shulchan Aruch that deal with bittel, and not in one place does the Shulchan Aruch say it. Rama, the Rama is the one that said the Rama never said that you should that you shouldn't be samech on bittel that it's it's mitam tame so late. How come he only says it by chol of mitzvahs or, or by a woman that's eating and, and by a nursing mother? That's the only place he said that it's tam timtum. According to the to Rav Nasha Klein, there should be the Shulchan Aruch should is the whole way through. You should say, "Look, it's mutter, but don't do it because mitam tam is It's a bad idea." Hmm. And then I have another raya. I mean, okay, I, I the last time I spoke about Rav Nasha Klein, I said I'm, I'm not. He was a uh, tremendous, tremendous Talmud Chacham. He wrote about fifteen svarim. I think we oh, we have it here in the in the, uh, in the library, he, and, and he covers the whole breadth of. Of uh, Torah uh, literature and everything, and his bikias and his lambdas. So I'm not. I'm just. Ta- you're allowed to to, to to state an opinion. I'm not disagreeing with him. I just. But the, I have a raya that there's no tempt in my life, because the um, the 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 reason why From when you that was the of I, I'm telling you, you'll see. Yeah, but are you talking about something that's part of a shisha? No. Are you talking about in general, machalos uh, trefos or not? Yeah, I'll see, you're, you're just saying on. If something, it's, it's something became treif. So when you kash it, what they're doing is, let's say you, you, you boil water. So what happens is, the, 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 in the wall of the pot are bleas of iser. So you boil water, the bleas go into the water. So the question is, what do you accomplish? If the bleach going into the water, now the water is treif, now the treif of water goes back into the pot. So what, what are you, how could you cast your pot? If it's, so the Rishonim say that there's one or two H's. Either you have to have a pot that the amount of water in the pot is more than shishim than the, the wall of the pot. So that way, whatever tarot is going into the water is bottle. But if you don't want to have a big, if you don't have a big enough pot for that, so then what you could do is you wait till it's an Ain Binyamu. You wait 24 hours. And after 24 hours, it's what's called nosin tam with gam. The the taste of the tam is is off, and and therefore you, it won't be it won't answer the water. That's the whole reason why you can kasher. So now there's a machok to be shown, and why is nosin tam with gam? What the some be shown say because because it loses identity because it has a foul taste. But the halacha the shulchan aruch passes not like that. The shulchan aruch says the reason why it's mutter is because of bittul berov, and even though normally you need shishim. When something's no sin tam with gam, it's bato even in berov. But it's based on, on principle of bittel. So if you're going to tell me that you, that it's better not to rely on bittel because it's mitam tame, so then you can't kasher anything. Because <laughs> you're going to kasher when it's an ben yomo, then you're always, you're always relying on bittel. So you, 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 there, there is no way to kasher anything in the world. So that's my ha'ara. Unless he'll say maybe... I don't know. Maybe he's only talking about Yavish. Maybe he's only talking about where it's Yavish. But then he talks. He says even Lach Balach before. Yeah, I don't know. That's my Ha'ara. Anyway, so there you have the uh, the range of opinions. There's the, uh, there's early Achronim that, that argue whether it's Apicorsis not to each other in trade, or it's not Apicorsis. And the um, and and the Bnei Yisosha says it's a mitzvah to eat something in bottle. And uh, and Rav Nasha Klein says it's better not to. Rav Maisha has a tshuva which I have a lot of trouble understanding. It's on the last page. I still don't understand it too well. If you want to look at it afterwards, you could. Rav Maisha seems to say that by by um, by 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 there is a basis to be machmer. Okay. Anyway, that's the story. Should eat the